presence being here with us. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we thank God most of all for his presence being in the house. Anybody glad about it? Praise God. Hallelujah. I thank God that he's chosen to be with us. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. His mercy endures forever. We thank God for those that are joining by the way of the internet today. We are Wings of Eagles Christian Church located 1418 Avondale Drive in the beautiful city of Durham, North Carolina. You are welcome today. Praise God. We thank God again for, for his presence. We thank God for the people of God and those that love him. And we thank God for every family that's represented here. I think there's a need to pray for our families. I woke up with that this morning. Praise God. We need to pray for our family, our family members. Praise God. We got to be that example to them. Regardless of of how they may have looked at you in the past, when you became a new creature in Christ, you've been ordained to be the light. Be the light. Be the light. That's who we are. Just, just let them see the, about the change that God has made in you. If some people need uh, visuals. We can preach the word of God. And they may not get it, but when they see the the genuine change in you. The family know you. Somebody say, family know us. Or some of them talked about you. They, they knew you. But let them see the change in you. Praise God. That's, that's for somebody out there. Just receive that. Sometimes we're intimidated uh, to be the one to stand up, you know, and, and you sitting there with the word for your family but you're intimidated about it, you know, because some people knew your background, your failures, and some people will hold on to them, but God has forgotten. So just rise up above your past failures and speak when God calls you to speak. Somebody said, we got to represent. We're going to represent. So we thank God that he's with us, and we thank God again for him being good, faithful, there's none like him in all the earth. Father, we just bless you today, and we welcome your presence in this place. We ask you to fill this house, even as you fill our hearts. We thank you for the outpouring of your spirit, and knowing you as the God that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. You are awesome, God. There's not one that compares to you in all the earth. You are the true and the living God. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you, God, that you, even you chose to make man in your own image. And, God, we strive to be like you today, God. We strive to be like you. We thank you for the example of your son, Jesus Christ, as he came to earth and lived among us, showed himself to be strong, and we look to him today. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that you've given us, you've equipped us, with our oh, Father God, we thank you for him being sent to be alongside us, to fill us with your spirit, to and do us with power. And we say, Holy Spirit, have your way in this place today. And we ask you to rise, God. Let your enemies be scattered. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word being alive and true. And we thank God for the word that we've been uh, uh sharing over the last few weeks about deeper foundation. Deeper foundation. Anybody been digging? Uh, some of us all have been digging in the spirit realm that we're going to go deeper. Amen. But we thank God that after we've established a good foundation, it's time to build. It's time to build. Once you know that your foundation is sure, you've cleared out all of the debris in your life, you've uprooted some things and and then you then you level some things off, you're ready to build on it. And we're going to uh, try to give you an understanding what we ought to do now. We're going to stand on the promises of God. After your foundation is right, praise God, you need to begin to get familiar with the promises of God, what God has said. Somebody say God still speaks. 
he still speaks. He's not gone silent. Amen? See, some of us, we're uh, listening for a voice to come through the wall. Mary, Mary, where art thou? Somebody says, let's open the book. Open the book and let him speak. Amen? Praise God. Open the book. Open the book. His word will speak. And one thing about the word of God is true. Amen? His word is going to stand forever. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to share with you the message. They stand on the promises of God. Uh, first, uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says, For all the promises of God in him, in him, somebody say in him, are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. So we want to be in him. We understand that it's in him that we live and move and have our being. Amen. So he is our resource, praise God, that we can go to to gain information, to gain understanding, to gain knowledge, to receive of his spirit, to receive of his power, to receive directions. Amen. So we go to him and we stand on what he says and has said. Amen. We want to put it in the past tense as well as the present tense. Amen. He has already spoken, but yet he still speaks. Anybody in a relationship with him where he still speaks to you? He speaks to your spirit man. Amen. My God, I thank God if we would only have ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord would say, we would be moved over into a better place when we know that God has spoken. And we, like we used to say back in the day, we could take it to the bank. But I found out the other day that some of us, we, we got lock boxes and cash around the house. That's just for us. It's better have some security in that. They, they done told the world about us. Oh, okay, come on, let me get back. <laughs> yeah and amen. We got extra security. Hey, they call him Smith and West. Okay. Well, let me read this again. <laughs> For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. So we look to God. I'm so glad to have a relationship with the Lord today. You know, some in those times where you want to falter. You want to give up. You want to back up. You want to shut up. God is still there. I'm so glad about that, how he will encourage you. One word from the Lord is able to set your life on course forever. One word. One word you can stand on. Amen? See, when we build, so when we think about building, you know, some of us that have been blessed and God has enabled us to build houses or whatever. You want to put something that, that identifies who you are in the house, something special. I've seen some athletes build houses, my God, and after they get through with it, nobody else don't want them because they've got too much of them. Amen? But it ought to be something that you uh, uh, glean from the word of God that you call your own. Anybody standing on the word from the Lord? Amen. You ought to get to that point where you were reading and studying the Word of God that you see yourself in the Word. You ought to be able to see yourself in the Word, praise God, and stand on the Word. There ought to be a promise from the Lord that you claim. You may have pasted it on the wall. You might have it, uh, uh, your screenshot may be, be there, the, the scripture of that Word or whatever, but you're standing on that. And some of us are believing for something in the future, praise God. And you say, God, I'm standing on this promise here. This belongs to me. Amen? So the word of God speaks so much about the promises of God. Let us go to 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1 and verse 1 says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. If we, do we have anybody in the house that has attained 
like precious faith, even as the apostles of old, even as the disciples during this time that this uh, 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 scripture was given. Do you have like precious faith? With us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according to his divine power, have given unto us all things that pertain unto the light and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. My God, that ought to make you want to shout right there. Exceeding and great precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is the, in the world through lust. Somebody said, I'm glad I got out. Oh, my God. Some of us, we were in bondage. We were in gross darkness, but God has given us a way out that we might be able, praise God, to receive of his great and precious promises. Uh, we want to talk about these today, praise God. Oh, it was such a wealth of knowledge in, the, in this scripture that I wrote. We saw about precious promises. We saw promises obtained through faith. Promises multiply through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ, whereby grace and peace is multiplied. We saw promises that enable us to partake of the divine nature of God. We saw promises that help you to escape the corruption that is in the world. Promises. Somebody said God has given us a way out. Oh, the word of God says so he gives you a way of escape. Whatever you face in life, he gives us a way out. And I thank God for Jesus Christ, praise God, that made a way for us. Not only to come out, praise God, of corruption, come out of lust, come out of sin, but he's made a way for us to go boldly to the throne of grace. Oh, we can talk to God about it. And somebody said God talks back. Uh, he talks back, praise God. See, we as, as, as believers in Christ, we have to change our mindset that we understand that we can go with God with everything that's on our heart and tell him about it and talk to him about it, praise God, that he might speak to us and release a word into our heart that we can stand on. I want to stand on the word of God. Let us go to John 3, talking about precious promises here. Praise God. John 3, 16. This scripture probably won some of you all over. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Talking about born again believers, a promise to you, praise God, Whosoever believeth in Christ shall not perish, but have everlasting life. A promise to us, everlasting life, being with the Father forever, crying out, holy, 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 holy is the Lord God, holy is the Lord Almighty. Praise God, a promise to us. There's a better a life after this life that we have, my God. Philippians 4 and 19 said, but my God, talking about promises now, we're going to pound down on promises. We're going to hit the nail on the head today with promises. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because you got a relationship with Christ, uh, the Father has promised that he will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. My God, we haven't seen nothing yet of all that the Father has for us, praise God. We've just tapped into, my God, can you imagine what it looks like to be in the presence of the Lord? Oh, my God. But I thank God for the promise that he will supply. See, some of us, we're trying to do things our own way, but allow the Father to supply that need. 
Don't take any shortcuts. Don't make any promises. Don't allow somebody to tie a string to the gift that they give you. Our God gives freely. Freely receive. Oh, my God, I thank God for the promises. And, my, and sometime in our life, sometime it looked like our promise has been denied. Seemed like we missed it. We fell and fallen short, praise God, and we've gotten too old. Somebody said, I'm not too old for it. I'm still breathing. I'm still kicking. I'm still moving. It's still in me. Oh, my God. See, somebody getting stirred up there. We're going to look at Abraham the, as they recounts the, in the word of God the story of Abraham over in, the, in Romans, the fourth chapter. Praise God. It, 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 we, it, you can find this from the 18th through the 25th verse. Praise God. When uh, Abraham and Sarah, both of them, just in age, numbers, they got old. Somebody said, you keep living, you're going to get old. That's a good thing. You're living, but you're going to get older, you know, you know. And Okay. All right. But God promised Abraham that he would become the father of many nations. We're talking about promises now. Has God spoken anything to you and it feels like it might have passed you by? There's some of us, we had to go back to a calendar and recall the date and the time that God spoke this thing, but I've been waiting on the promise. But in the meantime, what have you been doing, praise God, to make the promise come forth? You know, some see, we still got pictures hanging on the wall, but it don't seem to come to me when I talk about it. Amen. But what are you doing to make that thing come alive? Amen. So he promised, praise God, that he was going to be a father of many nations. But when he got old, praise God, he still held on to the promise. The word of God talks here in, this, in these scriptures about Abraham being not weak in faith. We got to still have that same faith to believe what God promised. Regardless of the circumstances that come your way, you have to still have strong faith. He was not weak in faith. He considered not that his body was dead, being that he was 100 years old. My God, can you imagine? Here he is, 100 years old, but he's still holding on to the promise. Because God said, just because God said, I'm going to hold on to the promise. He also believed, praise God, that his wife Sarah, whose womb was dead, would be able to carry his seed to birth. Not only did he have to believe for himself, but he was believing for his wife. Come on here, honey. God said. God promised us. He couldn't do it alone. All right. See, we got to understand, sometimes God gives us a promise, and it's, and it's a, a corporate thing or a partner thing that he's going to do it. So I encourage you, uh, you, 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 you that are married out there, don't give up on the promise. It may seem like your spouse is a little lagging behind or whatever, but if God said, I'm going to do this for you all, for the both of you, if you had to tie a rope to him, we going there. We going in. We going in together. Amen. So some of us, praise God, that rope for you might be prayer. I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray for her because God has said that we're going to be able to produce. Amen. But the word of God lets me know that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Somebody said, unbelief will make you stagger. Uh, so we got to guard against unbelief, praise God. We got to put up some walls against unbelief. When the naysayers come your way and the, those that are doubt and try to burst burst your balloon, praise God, you just put up your hand. Can't come here. 
Amen. So he did not stagger. He did not waver, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Even in the midst of waiting for the promise, you ought to praise God. You ought to tell somebody that God said, that God promised me, and that he would, and he's a promise keeper. Praise God. So you got to know and remember what God said. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You got to continue to believe that God is able to perform this thing. It may look bleak right now. I may have lost some battles, praise God, but I'm standing on the promise. But I thank God that it shall be fulfilled if you keep on believing. Keep on doing what it's going to take to bring that thing uh, forward, praise God, that it might be birthed. So I encourage somebody out there, don't give up on your dream. Don't lose hope. Stay in faith, praise God. We understand that we need faith faith to produce. Let us look at Luke 1. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Whether you are barren, whether you're sick, whether you're bound, whether you've been hurt, whatever it is, whatever obstacle comes your way, nothing is impossible. Praise God, with God. So we must learn how to hold on to the promise through our faith. Amen? We got to hold on to the promise through our faith. We understand that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm talking about that now faith that's found in Romans 10 and 17. It comes by hearing. It comes by hearing. And it comes by hearing and hearing, praise God, that where you get that depthness of understanding, that revelation Praise God, as you get into the word of God and claim the word of God as your own, and then you begin to, be, uh, to get the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom to do. Somebody says sometimes we need wisdom to do. We need wisdom. Without the word of God, we don't have the wisdom to make something become productive. So, God, I need your word. Enlighten me. Enlighten me. Open up my understanding. God, I ask you to, to, to those things that seem to be out of focus, to refocus some things in my life through your word. The word is able to put your life on course. When you once were walking in doubt and fear, praise God, you recognize that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. So we began to use the word against those things that tried to bring doubt and fear and uh, and, and rejection and all kinds of things to hinder us from going forward. So we want to be in the word, in him that we live and move and have our being, in him. Our confidence has to remain in him. Amen. Even some, sometimes you have to re rehearse what God has said to you. You know we, how we learn how to taught our kids how to talk? I just got to tell it. When my granddaughter was born, and Ben began to grow up, she began to say, Granddad, Daddy, Granddad. She laughing over there. And my wife, she, for some reason, she just couldn't get with it. Every day she came around me, she just living on Granddaddy, Granddad. And one day, something got into my wife. Now, we're teaching her to tie the toe. No, don't say granddaddy. Say granny. Where did they come from? We we've dealt with that. And then a, a few weeks later, my grandbaby came back to the house, and she was trying to call me what she was calling me, but she heard what granny said. And she started calling me Grandnanny. <laughs> Grandnanny. Confused my baby because she wanted some glory. And we had to work on that thing. No, I had to work on that thing. You can call me Granddaddy, but you can call her Granny. I'm not Grandnanny. All right, I got off on that. I, 
I have these flashes. Y'all forget, I have flashes every now and then. But when we're teaching our kids, praise God, uh, 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 anyone, I don't even know where I'm at now. What scripture I stop at? All right, 10 and 7. Faith come by hearing. Faith come by hearing. When we train the training our kids up, we got to train up. We, we preach that word. I have to revisit that message again. Train up. We got to train our kids up in the ways of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we train, praise God, as we hear the word of God, our faith level increases. Amen. It's going to increase. If you somebody need to challenge yourself, I, 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 I challenge myself this week. Every day I'm going to read. Uh, you, you can just how many scriptures you want. I'm going to get in the word of God this week. Watch your faith level rise. Amen. Praise God. And we understand in the word of God we find great precious promises. You might find that thing that you've been desiring in the word. You might find faith to go forth and produce that thing in the word of God. Amen? Philippians 4. It says uh, in verse 6, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Somebody says we can tell God about it. And the peace of God, which passes of all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He's able to keep you, praise God, as you come before him and you have a request from him uh, that you brought to him. Amen. He's able to keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Amen. Somebody say, I want to be in him. I want to be in him. In Christ, I live and move and have my being, praise God, that the, the promises of God might be fulfilled in my life. Somebody said Jesus is a, a way maker. One day he made a way for me. Oh, my God. Y'all can finish the rest of that song. Amen. He's a way maker, praise God. But you got to trust him and lean not to your own understanding. All of your ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Amen. So do you seek him? You got to seek him. Seek him first, praise God. Oftentimes, we began to seek the advice of others when you ought to seek, praise God, the promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. Praise God. And the apostle uh, 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 Paul, he understands some things about his life that, that God had called him and was using him in a great way, but he wanted to be remain faithful to the call. Somebody said, we got to remain faithful to the call in our life. Amen. So he had to go before the Lord, praise God, and talk to God about what he was dealing with, amen, that he might uh, not get off course and not be able to fulfill the promise. So God was using Paul in a great way. And over in 2 Corinthians 12 and 7, and he said, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation. So God would just open up his understanding and give him revelation, praise God. And he was walking in it, and he didn't want to get caught up in pride. So he had to go to the Father, before the Father, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Different scholars said it was this and that, praise God, that he dealt with, amen, and, and said the message of Satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure. Amen. All of this that he had to fight against, that he would fulfill the promise of the call on his life. Amen. He had to battle against this, that I not be high-minded, I not be walked up or get caught up in pride, but I had to deal with this thing, praise God, that, that was sent, praise God, that would allow God allowed to happen in my life, amen, that I might walk in the promise. Somebody said, I'm gonna, somebody said I just voluntarily get it right and check myself daily unless I be exalted above measure get caught up in myself and walk outside of the promises of God and all of a sudden I am the great I am. You know, I call in myself the, the, the retribution, the redeemer, whatever. 
I am nothing without God. Nothing. Walk in humility. Recognize if it had not been for the Lord on my side. But this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Humble yourself down before the Lord God, that he might show himself strong. Most gladly, therefore, will I strength my, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Talking about fulfilling the promises of God. Don't get high-minded. Don't think you are all of that because God used you. Amen? See, God does one thing in your life, and all of a sudden you, can, you got 15 bodyguards and, 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 and three put pit bulls walking with you. Y'all ain't ran into them yet. They out there. Yo, the one you grew up with, and you got to talk to an administrative assistant, a secretary. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you can partake of the divine nature of God. 2 Corinthians 1. It says, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, the God of all comfort. Comfort is in the word of God. Amen. Who comforts us in our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in, uh, are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. That's a promise. Amen. Some of us don't know the last time that we were at peace. Don't know the last time that we had a good night's sleep. Amen? But the comforter has come, and he abides in us. Amen? So somebody needs to just turn it over to the Lord. Cast your cares upon him. He cares for you. He sent his son for you. Amen? So we need to be in comfort that we can comfort somebody else. We can't effectively minister to anyone when we in bondage ourselves. You tied up and you trying to untie somebody. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I can't reach you. I, I got this thing over here. Deal with the issues in your own life before you try to speak in somebody else's life. Now I'm telling you, the enemy knows those also that labor among us. Be careful who you go to war with. Somebody just needs to hear that. And now you're going to uh, minister to somebody else and all of a sudden the, your partner falling out too. You got to minister to them first. Amen? All right. Staying on, on, on this promise of God. Amen? Praise God. When we, when he was talking about the word of God, we were talking about tribulation. He was talking about pressure, talking about trouble. He's talking about distress or affliction. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3. We often use this scripture. Sometimes we need to just see it. In verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. My God, if you got a lot of confusion going on in your house, in your marriage, that relationship, it's God in it that you're always arguing, always at odds with one another. Somebody said, we got to check ourselves and invite the Lord in. God, I need you in the middle of this mess. Come in and destroy this mess that's going on in our life. Amen? But we all with an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed in the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. I thank God that we have been created in the image of God. Amen. It's only 
when we began to take on a lot of the ways of the world and all and began to develop a sin nature all over again that we don't even uh, resemble the Lord at all. So we need to check ourselves daily. And the spiritual mirror, we ought to look. Amen. And I thank God for this word that is a reflection of the Father. Do you, do you see yourself walking like him, looking like him, talking like him, acting like him? Amen. We've been changed. Somebody say, I've been changed. Amen. I've been changed. And we thank God that he's given us a strategy. He's given us a way to stand on the promises of God. I thank God that he does nothing without making a way for us to stand on it. Let us go to Ephesians 6 chapter. Finally, my, in the 10th verse, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let us be strong in the Lord and the power of his might that we can stand on every promise that he has released to us. And then he gives you a strategy, how to dress. We're talking about spiritually here. Put on the whole arm of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Somebody said the devil going to try to show up. Now, he's going to try to show up when God has given you a promise. For we wrestle. You got to understand what you're fighting against. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, 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 praise God, take unto you this is personal, and I make it personal. Take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Then he continues, stand therefore. Keep standing. Keep standing. Praise God. I'm not going to be easily moved. I'm going to call on the Lord God. I'm calling on the angels. God, stand up in me, whatever it is. Read that scripture you got in your pocket. But whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girthed about with truth. Let truth, the word of God is truth. Let that be your portion. And having the breastplate of righteousness. I'm strapped. Somebody said in the spirit realm, I'm strapped down now. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Praise God, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. I thank God for faith. I thank God for faith. Faith establishes who you are. Praise God. When you, when you know who you are and you're walking in faith, you are not easily moved. I have faith to believe. I've seen it. I remember when God showed it to me. I remember when I heard clearly from the Lord. So all of that that you sent my way, Satan, I press it back in faith. I take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I thank God that's our offensive weapon against the enemy. It's the Word of God. Know the word of God, amen, that the promises of God might be made fulfilled in your life. You got to be worded up. The enemy going to even challenge who you are. When God begins to promote you and, and calls you to do greater works and people begin to question, who told you you could do that? Why do you believe that you're qualified to do that? you got to understand what God has said, praise God, and stand on every promise that he's made. Amen? Stand on the promises of God. Let the promises of God become who you are. Let the promises shape, praise God, your way of living. Amen? It'll change your habits about things. It changes your expectations when you receive a promise from God. Somebody needs to know the promise keeper. So we thank God for his word today as we stand on the promises of God. Give the Lord a hand, pray. We're going to stand and keep standing. If I need a support system, praise God, I'm going to call on you. Pray, pray.
Pray without ceasing. Now, it, it's good. Somebody got to understand all of us need a, 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 a prayer partner. So somebody around us that we can call on and, and confide in, praise God. I'm going through, brother. I'm going through, sister. Will you come in agreement with, with me that this promise might be fulfilled in my life? Amen. So we thank God for those that are joining. By the way of the internet today, perhaps you heard the word of God and it turned your heart toward the Lord, praise God. And you understand that you need a change in your life. And, and as we've talked about Jesus Christ, he is the way to salvation. All you have to do is cry out to him and ask him to come into your life and save you. He will bring about that change. He will come into your life, fill you with his spirit. And he would just make you into a new creature. So I encourage you to find yourself a church. We are open to you, praise God. We are located in Durham, North Carolina, Wings of Eagles Christian Church, 1418 Avondale Drive. If you're not in this area, find a church home, praise God. Come in that place uh, with the heart of humility that you're hungry to be fed the word of God. And God will feed you, praise God, and change your life. Somebody has been blessed with this word of God and you want to sow into this ministry, follow the prompts on the, on the screen, and we will gladly receive it and use it for the glory of the Lord. We will see you again on Wednesday at 7 and again next Sunday. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you glad you're here? Thank you for joining our service today. We believe that your life will be changed through this message. If you would like to learn more about Wings of Eagles Christian Church, please visit woechristianchurch.com. Tap the About tab to know our pastors. Tap Contact to connect with us. Feel free to also see Inside Wo. On Sunday we have a virtual Thrive teaching on Facebook at 9.30 and in-person corporate worship at 11 a.m. with our full band and praise team. In keeping with our mission and vision, Wo has many ministries designed to train, equip, and provide hands-on support to every member of your family. If you would like to make a donation, then feel free to give via text message. Step 1. Text GIVE25 or any other amount to 919-551-3675. Step 2. Follow the prompts. Step 3. Register your credit or debit card. It's only required for the first time only. Join us virtually on Facebook at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening for Life Class. Visit us in person at 1418 Avondale Drive, Durham, North Carolina, 27701 Suite 15. Hey, if you're still down, don't stay grounded. Get up and soar high.